internet? I bet you're surprised to see me. Well, too bad, I'm alive. Yes, we took some time off for some health reasons, but I'm doing much better now, I'm just fine. But you know what isn't just fine? Comic books. Folks, I come with dire warnings today. Are you sitting down? Are you near loved ones who can comfort you in this time of need? I sure hope so, because what I have to tell you today is about to rock the comic book industry to its core. Because today, it is doom and gloom and warnings of end times the likes of which we have never seen before. Folks, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, nay, the worst news. But as of last week, GameStop is no longer selling comics. I know, I didn't want to believe it either, but it's true. The Funko Pop distribution center known as GameStop has stopped selling comics. This is indeed a huge blow to the industry, coming fresh on the heels of several other cancellations from trusted comic book retailers, such as Ace Hardware, Jimmy Lube, that hot dog cart vendor on the corner of 85th and 2nd, and Doc Johnson's Good Time General Store, home for all your chicken feed, mustache wax, and weird tonks and unlabeled brown bottles needs. Yes, these five tyrants of graphic novels, the first names that you always thought of when you thought of where to get comics, have closed their doors to the industry. Folks, this is no joke, despite how much you're all probably laughing. No. This is quite serious, because if I can't walk into a GameStop and get the latest Marvel or DC issue, then where am I supposed to go? A comic book store? Who even heard of such a thing? Nobody's actually buying this, right? Okay, 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 okay. Listen, we're just having a bit of fun here. Yes, it is true that last week GameStop decided to stop selling comics, but it's also true no one cares. No one went to GameStop for comics. No one even knew that GameStop was selling comics. This means nothing to the comic book industry. So why are we talking about today? Well, because last week when this story broke, a random Twitter account decided to declare that this was a huge blow to the comic book industry, at which point all of comic book Twitter proceeded to point at this account and laugh and laugh, because who on earth would take this seriously? Who would think that this was real? Ah, 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 ah. Here's the problem. Some people did take this seriously and some people did think this was real. Folks, today I want to talk to you about fear. Because as I said, a relatively small Twitter account got massive attention from the comic book community last week because it said that GameStop refusing to sell comics was, quote, a giant blow to comic industry, which is already suffering enough and now becoming one of the weakest industry in every state. Wow. I had no idea how bad the grammar on that was until I read it out loud just now. Now, when this post went up, it was met with overwhelming, who? Because the general response from across the internet was, GameStop sold comics? Yeah, the post mostly gained a lot of attention for people poking fun at how absurd this statement was. Including myself, I'll admit I jumped into that dog pile. But here's the thing, a lot of people actually did believe this ridiculous statement. In fact, you might be wondering why I'm blocking out the address of the account. Because after everyone was done pointing and laughing at this post, the account it belonged to gained almost a thousand new followers within the span of a few days. And in retrospect, we really should have seen that coming because fear sells. Over the past few years, as YouTube and various other sites around the internet have become harder to break into, I've heard many older content creators say that they have no idea how someone new could get their start, how someone could build an audience today. I do. It's actually kind of easy. Fear. All you have to do is make a title card that says the thing you like is doomed, put a big angry face next to it, and bam, you got your audience. Because even someone who knows that's probably clickbait will have that voice in the back of their head that tells them, um, wait, hold on, that thing that I like? It could be doomed? Well, I'm sure that this is just clearly an absurd statement and it's just here to get clicks and it's in no way possibly true, but I mean, I should probably at least know what it is that they're talking about and that's all it takes because my friends, fear is addictive. You might not like being afraid, but once your brain gets that taste, it needs its next fix. And that means it's going to keep going back to that emotional dealer. 
But why am I bringing this up on comic class? What does this have to do with comic books? Because there are plenty of people out there on the internet trying to freak us out about the future of comics. We hear all the time about how the comic book industry is in trouble. Or we see people enraged at random issues saying this is everything wrong with comics. Again, I don't want to spread any of that around so I might not be showing you any examples of what I'm talking about, but trust me, just do a YouTube search on a random Marvel or DC issue you will instantly see what I mean. Now I know what some of you are going to say, hold up, this isn't just unique to comics. And you're right, I'm pretty active in the film and video game communities around the internet and believe me when I tell you, if you're into something, someone else out there is just waiting to tell you everything they think is wrong with it. I mean, hell, a couple of years ago, the makeup and metalwork communities here on YouTube had their own big controversial blowout which I actually tried to research for the sake of this video, and, um, yeah. I didn't understand any of it. I don't think that there's anything further from my wheelhouse than makeup and metalworking. Point is, yes, people are using fear and anger to get views no matter what community you're in. But when it comes to comics, fear isn't just part of the discourse. Many times, it is the discourse. When it comes to comics, it always feels like fear spreads faster and further than in any other community on the internet. I mean, I just used that random Twitter account as an example because of how funny it was, but literally just a few days before that, another online personality said that there was a rumor that Marvel was going to buy DC because DC was doing so poorly, and their source on the claim was... YouTubers! No! I'm not joking! And that insane rumor spread so far and fast that Jim Lee actually had to address it. One of the heads of DC Comics had to address a rumor that was based on just something YouTubers said. Again, I know that fear and rumors aren't specific just to comics, not by a long shot, but rumors coming from random YouTubers spreading so fast that the heads of companies have to comment on them? Guys, I'm a random YouTuber. Trust me when I tell you, we are not the people to come to for insider information. Comic book secrets. Shh, don't tell anyone. But the word on the street is, DC's big 5G book has been canceled and instead, they're going to launch a book called 6G, which is going to be set 80 years in the future and it's going to closely follow the grandchild of Batman and Superman. Comic book secrets. I have it on good authority from a source who has been living for the past six months inside the air ducts over at DC Comics that they're about to do another line-wide reboot while Jonathan Kent is still in the future with the Legion of Superheroes and they're going to end up erasing the universe that he was from to reboot it with a new universe where Lois and Clark never had a kid so Jonathan Kent no longer has a home to go back to and he's forced to stay in the future. Comic book secret. This one is hot off the presses, folks, a Professor Thorgy exclusive. We have it on good authority that the next big DC Comics event is going to cancel all their books, and then they're going to relaunch twice as many Batman books to take their place. Wait, that one could actually happen. Oh God, I don't wanna play this game anymore, it's not fun. So I found myself thinking about why rumors spread so quickly and so far throughout the comic book community, and part of it is because we're just a smaller community. Video games and movies have much larger fan bases than comic books, which means we're more tightly packed together. So when someone throws a rumor out there, it runs up the chain pretty fast. And it's also because comics tend to be more secretive about the behind the scenes information than any other medium. Movies, television, and games get in-depth information spills all the time. Comics, however, tend to keep all of that behind a locked door. So when people want info, they tend to go to whoever says they have it. And if that rumor comes from a random Twitter account or Reddit thread, then so be it. But the other reason and the main point I want to focus on today is because fear and comics go way back. Almost 30 years, these two have been inseparable. 
You see, in the early 90s, the comic book industry was a boomin'. There was gold in them Nar Hills, as everyone thought their collections would be worth a fortune, and there was no way this could ever go wrong. That is, until everything went wrong, and the comic book bubble burst, Marvel went bankrupt, and comic sales started to take a sharp decline. Now, since then, we've seen the industry slowly rise back up and pretty much even out, with brand new markets in the trade and digital fronts helping to expand and diversify the industry in brand new ways. All good news! But that fear never went away. Back in the 90s, people thought the sky was falling. We thought this was the end of comic books. And that generation has carried that fear with them and passed it down to the next. That's why you constantly see people talking about Marvel is in trouble, DC is in trouble, could these companies be going out of business? Because no matter how many issues they sell, how much merchandise they pump out, how many successful film franchises or shows they inspire, that fear from the 90s continues to be passed down from one reader to the next. And you might think that after 30 years we'd have lost that fear, but because comics are a smaller community than most other pop culture fandoms, not only are we more protective of it, we know what it feels like to lose it. Most people out there have only one comic book store near them that they can go to. I live in New York, so I have no shortage of shops to choose from, but I remember what it was like when I was growing up in the South. I had to drive half an hour to get to my nearest store, and when they eventually closed down, yeah, it was hard to find someplace new. It was like somebody crawling through the desert and all of a sudden the well they had been going to dried up. And I know I'm not alone on that. Most people out there who still buy physical books live with the knowledge that their access to those books could go away at any moment. Any day, that store that they go to and rely on for those physical books could just shut down and then they would have no place to go. And people on the internet are more than happy to take advantage of that fear for clicks. Because no matter how successful the comic book industry might become, the combination of that fear of the 90s mixed with how difficult it is for physical readers to still access their books keeps that thought of, what if this all goes away, kicking in the back of people's minds. So no matter how many sales figures say, yeah, the industry is doing fine, the moment someone on the internet says, the industry is dying, that fear instantly takes over. But as I said, the comic book industry did pull itself out of that 90s slump, and you know how it was able to do that? Well, there's many different elements that played a role in that, but there was one factor in particular that about 15 to 20 years ago really gave the industry that kick that it needed. Can you guess what it was? I'll give you a hint. It's the subject of today's video! It's fear! Yeah! Yes, around the early 2000s, Marvel and DC realized that they could bring in fresh new readers by scaring the pants off them. In 2004, Marvel saw Brian Michael Bendis hop on the Avengers tile and he launched a storyline called Avengers Disassembled, which he kicked off by destroying Avengers Mansion, murdering multiple members of the team, and having fan favorite longtime Avenger, the Scarlet Witch, go insane and be the root cause of the whole event. Needless to say, this shook up readers quite a bit. But not to be outdone, over at DC, they launched Identity Crisis, a storyline where beloved character Sue Dibney was murdered in cold blood and we had to figure out who was the culprit. Both these events sold like crazy and so began the string of events that have defined the comic book industry to this day. Marvel quickly followed up Avengers Disassembled with House of M, an event where 90% of the mutant population was depowered, leading to a multi-year-long era for the X-Men defined by doom and gloom. Then came Civil War, where the superhero community was divided and outlawed, which was then followed up by Secret Invasion, where we learned that any one of your favorite characters could be an alien spy, which then led into Dark Reign, where the bad guys literally won and took over the country. And while D DC wasn't as in your face with events as Marvel was at the time, you better believe they were dipping their toe into that pool as well. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do big epic storylines with huge stakes, but these events were relying on one thing above all else to sell themselves. Fear. Letting readers know everything is going to change forever in this event had readers paranoid to find out what would happen next. When Avengers Disassembled came out, they told readers in almost every single issue that characters were going to die. And if you wanted to know which of your favorite characters could possibly head off to that big letters page in the sky, then you needed to fork out some cash. And while we have seen that technique used sparingly in the past, after this event, 
That just became the new norm. With almost every single event, you could guarantee that there would be solicitations saying someone will die in this issue. And that was all you need to do to get readers pouring in because the moment that you put a gun to a character's head and tell audiences, fork out five bucks if you want to know if this character makes it out alive. Yeah, we're going to fork out the five bucks. We have attachments to these characters. Telling us they might die kind of means something to us. You want to know how bad this got? After Dark Reign, Marvel brought on a new era of books called the Heroic Age that they promised would be a return to the comics you always knew, back before Avengers disassembled, before Civil War and Secret Invasion, when all these heroes could come together and be defenders of justice once again. The age of events was over with, and today was the start of a new golden era. Yeah, not only did that last for only about six months before they started hyping up their next big event, but more characters died during the Heroic Age than they did during Dark Reign. The series of books where I repeat, the bad guys were running the country. And you want to know what the cherry on top was? The event that ended the Heroic Age was literally called Fear Itself. <laughs> oh, oh, hey everyone, it's me, Aaron, host of Comic Class, you might remember me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go off script here for a second, because I have to share this with you guys. When I started writing this episode out, I forgot that was the event that ended the Heroic Age. I forgot the Heroic Age led into fear itself, but ooh, ooh, that is just too good. Oh, I tell you, sometimes the universe just lines everything up in the correct order for you because when you're writing an episode about how comic book companies use fear to sell their events, and then all of a sudden you remember that their big break from events ended with an event that literally had fear in the title, just mwah, chef's kiss, just mwah, just perfect, just right in the exact sweet spot right there. Mmm. Now, I'm not saying that other forms of entertainment don't use fear to sell their products as well. Not at all. I mean, hell, every TV show that uses a season finale cliffhanger does that. But it's definitely more prominent in comics. If NBC promised characters on their shows were going to die as often as Marvel did that with their books, their entire Thursday night lineup would be made up of Andy Samberg and two people from Superstore by the end of the year. And just to make it clear, I'm not saying comics shouldn't have stakes. I'm not saying you shouldn't change things forever. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have massive cliffhangers every single month. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have big events or character deaths. Not at all. What I am saying though, is that when you spend about 15 years straight constantly hammering into your audience's head, everything is going to change. Characters you love will die. When that becomes the norm and is the background noise of our entire community, yeah, it's going to make for a very paranoid community. Yes, I hate how quickly completely insane rumors can spread. It drives me nuts that all it takes is some random person on the internet saying the industry is doomed for an audience to believe it. When we hear something completely bat crap crazy that makes no sense from an outlet with no sources, we should question it to no end. But at the same time, if the news kept telling you every single day another house in your neighborhood was set on fire today, and then someone in your building just randomly says, hey, do you smell smoke? I can't be too mad when half the building just jumps up and starts running towards the exits in a blind panic. I mean, for crying out loud, have you seen the discussion going on on the internet around DC's 5G event? For about six months now, the comic community has been talking about DC's new 5G event, an event that is something and will mean also something. That's about all we know. And that was all it took to let the internet run rampant with theories and speculations about how this could be the end of the DC Universe, the start of a brand new DC Universe, a completely new world, yet another reboot and status quo change, despite the fact that all we have to go on is Dan DiDio said, all of our greatest stories and events will create the backdrop and context for the great new adventure we have planned. Everything counts, and we guarantee there will be surprises along the way. And Jim Lee 
said, Our intent is not to do a line-wide reboot. Our focus is to continue what we've been doing, pairing characters with great creators and continue to make diverse and amazing stories that you guys love. We're telling stories about characters that can fly and going into other dimensions. It should be a lot of fun. What does that mean? It means nothing! Nothing at all! And yet... That, and some talk of some one-shots, a mysterious big bang, and some scribbling someone saw on a whiteboard was all it took to make the internet lose its freaking mind and think everything was coming to an end. Without knowing precisely what the danger is, would you say it's time for our viewers to crack each other's heads open and feast on the goo inside? Yes, I would, Kent. But I can't blame them, because Marvel and DC have spent 15 years now giving us blanket statements like that that did indeed lead to everything changing and characters dying and worlds exploding, so comic fans have been trained to freak out at just a collection of rumors and buzzwords. And as I started this video off by saying, fear is addictive. You might not like it, but if your brain gets enough of it, it needs to keep going back for its next fix. So when a random person online with no real information comes up to you in a trench coat in a dirty alleyway and says, Hey, come here. You want that good stuff? That insider info? You want to know how everything is going to change and how everything is doomed? Yeah, I got that for you. A lot of people are going to fall for it. Yes, we should be smarter about this. Yes, we should be able to identify when people are preying on your paranoia just to get clicks. But again, comic book industry, could you maybe stop making us so paranoid? So today, folks, I'm going to leave you with the one secret the comic book industry doesn't want you to know. I've got the one bit of insider info that will rock the comic book industry to its core. Comic book secrets. Everything is going to be, wait for it, wait for it, okay. That's it. That's the big secret that comic book companies don't want you to know. Everything is going to be okay. Combo companies don't want you thinking like that because they worry that if you stop being afraid, then you'll stop buying comics. And while yes, there is some truth to that, as I've said many times throughout this video, fear sells, that doesn't mean that's healthy. Comic books are here to be enjoyed. They're a thing that people go to for escapism. They're a thing that people go to for inspiration. They're a thing that people go to to just, well, have fun with. And if the thing that you go to to lift you up, to make you feel good, that thing that you look forward to every single week, suddenly becomes that thing that you dread hearing any news about at all, that's not healthy. That is not a good thing to turn your hobby into. It's not a good thing to turn your passion into, a thing that you are constantly paranoid about how it could possibly be ruined in this way, or what is the next possible thing that could go wrong with it over here. That's not something that you should be thinking about every single week when you go to the comic book store to pick up the newest issue of the thing that you have spent weeks looking forward to. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be worried or upset about what's happening in a comic. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be afraid about what might end up happening to a series that you enjoy. No, not at all. I'm not saying that you should go through your entire comic reading lifespan just shrugging at everything saying, eh, this is fine. None of this actually matters anyway. No, not at all. These stories and these characters, they do matter. They are important to people. So I understand being afraid about what might end up happening to them. But that shouldn't be the norm. That shouldn't be the thing that companies try to push on us to keep us reading comics. And it shouldn't be the thing that online personalities try to take advantage of in order to get themselves views. Yes, comics can constantly change, but change isn't always bad. Yes, there are going to be things that happen in books that you're not going to enjoy, but there are going to be things that happen in books that you do enjoy. And even if a character that you love goes in a direction that you don't like, or they end up dying, or a book that is very important to you ends up getting canceled, it doesn't mean that it won't be back. And it doesn't mean that there won't be another book out there that's going to mean just as much to you, or maybe even more to you, than that older series did. Because that's the great thing about comics. They keep going on, and there's always going to be something out there to enjoy about them. As I said, one of the reasons why so many people are afraid about the future of comics is because we hold with us that fear of the collapse of the 90s. 
But what people tend to forget about the collapse of the 90s is we survived the collapse of the 90s. Comic books grew back up after that collapse. They continued to prosper and go on from there. And everything was okay. Thank you guys very much for tuning in for the first brand new episode of Comic Class. Yes, as I promised you guys at the very beginning of February, we were going to take some time off so that we could come in here and basically retool things, think about how we wanted to do this show a little bit differently. So let me know what you thought of this first brand new episode in the comments down below. And I also just want to tell everybody out there, yes, we came in here, we made a video in which we said, hey, we need to take some time off, rework some stuff. Comic Class is going to be different now. I need to take some time off for some health reasons as well. And I'll be real with you guys this whole episode was about fear i was very afraid that basically that entire video was going to be met with boo this man no you guys were incredibly supportive you guys were super nice uh i got so many messages uh on that video and on twitter and on twitch from people just constantly telling me for the over the course of like weeks just telling me hey man take as much time off as you need you look after what's important you I look forward to everything that you're going to do from now on the stuff that you say you have lined up it sounds great so i hope that you guys are enjoying this i hope that you don't mind that i'm rambling here at the end uh, for the people who miss how comic class used to be uh this was it uh my ramblings here at the end you still get a little bit of that uh so yeah thank you guys very much i've been mean to come in here and make a video just thanking everybody just for their positivity and for their support uh for a while now so thank you guys so much uh and also uh as i mentioned uh you guys can follow me on twitter at professor thorgy but also you can follow me on twitch at professor thorgy that was another one of the big changes that we're going to be doing on this channel uh we're going to be doing some more stuff off the channel. We're going to be doing some stuff over on Twitch way more often. We're going to try and stream every single Saturday over there. So twitch.tv slash Professor Thorgy if you want to check us out over there. But thank you guys very much. And if you like this video, then spread it around the internet. It is the best way to help this channel grow. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.